Hello, I'm going to show you how to deploy your OpenShift lab on top of KVM uh, using the assisted installer. First of all, you will need uh, some prerequisites. Uh, like in any other uh, OpenShift deployment, you will need to configure your DNS with uh, at least two entries. One A entry for the API. In my case, I will use um, mm, uh, API dot the name of the cluster that I will name uh, OCP1 and then the base domain. In my, ca in my case I will use uh, lab, lab local. As you can see I have configured here uh, this IP and you also need a um, wildcard uh, in, in, your, in your DNS so uh, you every anything that you can put here just before the app will point to uh, an IP. For example, if I ping uh, apps, sorry. If you ping uh, this uh, this URL, you will give you the other IP, the IP used for the apps, and this is for the API. So uh, you need the, to set up this before uh, jumping into the installation. Uh, regarding the KVM, uh, well, I have here a KVM. You need to configure a network. As you can see, I don't have any network here. So let's create a new one. I will name it as OCPNet. Uh, you will need to configure it as route. Uh, using a VLAN or a di direct access to, to the uh, external network because you will need to access the uh, the VMs directly. Uh, in my lab, I, sadly, I don't have uh, that opportunity, so I will need to use NAT uh, and I, what I will do is just configure or run shuttle to run a tunnel to my, my KVM. So I will do it before. So you can see that I will configure not the 100 but 50 it's important to uh, enable a DACP mm, probably uh, in your setup you will have multiple KBMs because in my case in my lab I just have one uh, KBM that's probably is not enough to run a full cluster if you want to have multiple uh, workers uh, so you can spread the installation in multiple KBMs in my case, I only have one, so I will have to oversubscribe a lot uh, the CPU. Uh, so that could head that my my OCP cluster just uh, stop working because the KVM just uh, turn off the VMs or uh, just kill some processes because it has not enough uh, CPU. So that's why uh, you also have need to this routed mode or I direct access to at least to the to the network and in that case you probably will uh, have a DACP in that network so instead of using the um, libbeard uh, DACP uh, you can use an external DACP here okay so I will let this okay we have our network uh, enough resources in our KVM uh, I'm as I told you, I don't have enough resources, but I, I, need, I need to oversubscribe a lot. But uh, I recommend you to have uh, enough resources in, in one or multiple KVMs. And yes, you need to have a, a Red Hat account uh, with the with OpenSIP subscriptions attached. Uh, probably you can also access some trial subscriptions if you don't have uh, already purchased uh, a subscription for OpenSIF. So uh, once you have your account, you can go to cloud.redhat.com or directly log into the, into the console, that is console.redhat.com. You can, you can log in, I'm already logged. You go to OpenSIF go to create cluster you have all the options here and what we will be doing is just installing as a platform agnostic so uh, bare metal or bm straight as bare metal 
In our case, we will be exploring this assisted installer that, as you can see, at this moment is technical preview. So not supposed to use in production at this moment. We need to complete the cluster name that I said that is OCP1. Uh, we said that our uh, um, base domain is lab local. I want I will deploy a full cluster, so masters and workers. I won't use this single node OpenShift. Okay, so I just uh, let it uh, untouch it. And regarding the version, you have multiple versions. It is the long term. The actual um, the actual um, stable release. So the, the the latest or maybe not the latest, but one of the latest releases that we have nowadays for OpenShift and the release candidate at this moment. I will use for the date. Click next. Okay, at this moment. Uh, you can select uh, if you want to pre-install or install as part of the deployment OpenShift virtualization. That is the feature that when you run on top of bare metal nodes, you can run VMs on top of uh, OpenShift or OpenShift container storage. And now it's renamed to OpenShift uh, Data Foundation ODF. I will use this one because I don't have in my lab any other storage that can provide a read write many in my case. So I want to, to configure this uh, also makes necessary a little bit more resources, but it's it's convenient for me. Okay. And at this moment we just generate this ISO. This is an ISO image that we will, will be attaching to our VMs. And uh, so they are um, automatically discovered by by uh, the assisted installer. I will use the full image. It's a little bit more heavy, but you don't have to rely on any other external uh, ISO. So uh, I will keep this this option. Uh, you can also include a SSH key. Uh, if you need to troubleshoot the uh, assisted installer, I won't do it at this moment. And I'm not using any proxy. So uh, I will let it uh, this uh, without marking it. Once the ISO is created, you can download it to the, your PC. You can use directly the command or you have the URL. I will be downloading to the uh, to my directly to my KVM. So I will do curl minus O. I don't remember where is the status of this. Okay, it's here. So I will save uh, the image here, discovery ISO. And again, I will copy the URL and start downloading it. Okay. Okay, so let's move to create the VMs. I will create first one master. I will select the ISO. Uh, once it's completed, it's uh, it's as you can see, it's uh, 900 uh, max, so it could take some time. Uh, once we uh, once we boot the VM, it will run uh, a process that gathers all the information of the host and contact uh, cloud.redhat.com uh, so you can see here the machine and we will need to assign a role in this case I will assign a master and probably we have to change the name because the DNS the DHCP is not giving the host name in, in my case okay it's taking a long but we are almost there okay I will select the uh, ISO, we have it here. Okay, choose volume. Uh, memory and RAM. I will be putting uh, the very minimum here for the master. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not the uh, 16 gigs of RAM in my case. And for CPUs, I will create the root disk with the minimum uh, size, 120 gigs. 
I will give it a, ma a name master zero and I will select my network okay done the start the VM will start booting up in the meanwhile I will create a worker so you can see how a worker is created in the same way in this case I will use uh, 30 in my lab 32 gigs of RAM and 12 CPUs I will create the root disk in the same way I will give it the name worker 0 remember that you need three masters and at least two workers but since we are uh, installing ODF we will need three workers in this case I will select the OCP network and uh, since we are using um, OC ODF we will need an additional disk so I will customize this VM before installing I will add an additional disk of 100 gigs using virtio for, for the bus for in my case and that's all so you will need to repeat this uh, to create three masters and three workers okay so uh, in the meanwhile uh, I will show to you how to assign the roles uh, you can see this is the first master that I created uh, this it says insufficient because we need to uh, to have three masters created and assign it as master role and you need to change the name to in my case master zero sometimes if you create all VMs at, at once you don't know which one is uh, the right one so you can say, uh, check the IP for example this master zero you will you will see that it's the same um, same IP that I have here okay master series 235 235 okay so you are pretty sure that this is the the right VM in this case I will change it to uh, worker 0 and assign the worker okay so now I will stop the video and create the rest of the VMs. Okay, I created the rest of the VMs, uh, three masters, three workers, and assigned the right roles. Now you can see that uh, all is ready. Remember that sometimes it could say that the uh, NTP is not synchronized, so it's important that you, your KVM is synchronized with NTP. And we can then click Next we can configure the network uh, so I will I will let the uh, the defaults here the only thing that since I already configure my API IP um, ingress IP uh, I need to select the right ones because uh, the other case is you just can use the DHCP and change the uh, change the configuration in the DNS which is not optimal you can also use some advanced configuration changing the internal networks if maybe if it's uh, overlapping in your environment here you can also add uh, the public uh, S my public SSH which is really good uh, because uh, this time is not just for uh, just, mm, for troubleshooting the assisted installer but which is creating this uh, this public uh, public uh, SSH into the nodes that you create the final node so that means that if you want to jump into using SSH to your OpenShift nodes you will be using this SSH key so I will copy mine in this case and we are good to go 10 and okay we are good to go you can check the your configurations and click install cluster okay it will take some time until you fill in this bar and you can see how the status is changing over the time uh, here 
you can see that the bootstrap we don't need an additional machine for bootstrap like in other in other environments that's because the bootstrap is changing uh, over time on the masters okay and you don't need also uh, this external load balancer because as you can see here uh, um, virtual IP is created for both uh, API and applications for production that th th this behavior is the same that you will find in any automated installer in in OpenShift. Uh, but uh, for production I really encourage you to use an external external load balancer okay now we just need to wait a little bit so I will stop the video and uh, relaunch it and re retake it again uh, once it's uh, completed we have now our OpenShift cluster already installed and uh, OpenShift container store has also deployed on that cluster using the additional disks that we added to the worker nodes once it's complete you can find here the uh, password for the default user cube admin i suggest you to to save it uh, in somewhere if you plan to use it uh, often uh, instead of just creating new users that is the best way to go uh, in any case and you will also can download the cube config also it's better to download it uh, because it will disappear in 20 days at this moment we have this url pointing to the console and that we will be opening at this moment but in case that you have any trouble you also have here a message that just remember that you have to add these um, these entries in your DNS to be able to to reach uh, OpenShift. So now let's jump into the uh, into the OpenShift console. You will find that everything is uh, running, but you still need to set up a couple of things to uh, have everything ready to be used. For example, the uh, I will put in password for cube admin. Okay. So um what I was saying, ah yeah, the the registry. So one thing that you need to configure is the registry. The registry by default at, in, with this installation it's some kind of freeze or halted because we didn't select which stores to use. Since we deploy OpenShift container stores in this cluster, we will be using uh, these stores to as the backend for our internal registry. So we need to do just a couple of things. We can go here to uh, stores classes, and you will see all the OCS OpenShift container stores um, stores classes. We need to uh, define one of them as the default. So, for example, in my case, I will use CFFS as the default one. How I can configure a default uh, Stodas class is just adding this annotation. Stodas class dot Kubernetes dot io uh, is default class equals true. And now, when you go to Stodas classes, you have a default. So, when you don't say anything about the Stodas class in your deployments, it will pick this this one. And the second thing is to configure the registry to create a persistent volume using this storage class. For doing that, it's just you need to look for a, an object that is called config, config .re image registry operator. This one. There is just one instance in the whole cluster. And here you can see that it's in management state removed we need to change that to manage but we need to add information about how to get the stores here uh, in our case since we are just have dynamic stores and everything is set up to use this um, default uh, stores class is just putting empty values for a volume claim okay i need to reload Copy stores manage. Okay, now it's updated. 
at this moment you will see how uh, the operators start uh, doing its ma its magic and change the uh, create the volumes for uh, for the image uh, registry and everything will set up if you go to image registry registry you will see that uh, persistent volume has been claimed it's bound it's using the default storage okay so it just takes some time to um, to reconfigure everything in the meanwhile as I told you you can see here there is a message that it's better to configure any authentication provider uh, for a lab like this you can uh, go to here and just configure uh, local users okay so if you go to global configuration and oath and you can create a new provider for example with local users using an http uh, pass file i have here an example for example yes, this is a file with the uh, with some credentials for for users okay i just just add and the operator for authentication will configure a new authentication provider i won't do it uh, at this moment okay uh, what else oh, i also want to show to you how to add nodes because you can see here our and uh, our nodes what happens if i want to include a new node uh, using the assisted installer well i can go to cluster uh, cloud.redhat.com uh, or sorry to console directly go to OpenSieve look for the, the cluster that you install in our case is OCP1 and you will see that it's a hat at host it's just a matter of downloading the ISO put it into the VM and following the same procedure that we did to install the uh, the cluster okay so let's go how this is going uh, let's go to overview okay there are still some updates here i waited a little bit and now all my clusters are up and running so uh, i can continue checking that everything uh, it's okay in my cluster you can upgrade to a new cluster version in this case just clicking here and selecting update but what I will do right now is to check that the uh, the image registry is working because as you remember we changed the storage and everything needs to be synchronized so I will go to developer create a new project project test for example and select uh, one of the uh, applications that creates uh, storage and also uh, get the the code from JIT and build the image using uh, source to image. So we are sure that the that the registry is getting uh, that uh, new image that has been created. Okay, so I will stop the video and wait until it's built and already deployed uh, this this application. After waiting a little bit, you will find these um, dark blue circles that uh, means that uh, your applications are up and running. You can also check that the MySQL is using a persistent volume in the menu. You can add something to the, this menu in the developer view by looking for it in the search and just click add to, to menu. Okay, so the persistent volume is bound and you can also check that the actual um, application is working by accessing to it okay with this test we check that everything seems to be working and you just need to enjoy your uh, OpenSieve lab deploy with, with assisted installer enjoy it bye